and I just can't live without you. <laughs> David was serenading me, guys. I, I was. Oh, Baby, was. come back. <clears throat> <laughs> um, all right, brother. Episode 65 of By the Numbers. Man. 65 fucking episodes, man. It's crazy. I can't believe you stuck with me this long, bro. Dude, you're my partner in crime, dude. I couldn't imagine doing this shit without you, man. Oh, man, I appreciate that, bro. Me too. What have we got on the docket tonight? Man, we got First Omen, Ricky Stenicki, Bob Marley, One Love, The Lionheart, Haunting at Shanley, and I think I missed one. I think um, you got them all. Oh, I got them all? Oh, I thought we had more than five. No, we only have five this week. Yeah, yeah. Those are our five movies. This week, regular everyday show. Mm -hmm. But all right, that's Rich. I'm Dave. Let's get started. What is up, my friends? Welcome in as the Faces for Radio podcast presents By the Numbers, where we take new releases, video, streaming, or theater, we watch them, we review them, we let in our thoughts. I am your host, David. My co-host is... Rich. Rich, brother. Um, April is Autism Awareness Month, mm -hmm. and I wanted to call attention to that. Did you know that one in 36 children is diagnosed or identified with autism spectrum disorder? I did not know that. Um, this is per the CDC's autism and developmental disabilities monitoring. Um, so if you suspect your child may be on the spectrum, my granddaughter is, I have a nephew who is, we have a good friend who is, um, the, to contact the autism society, you can complete the contact form on their website. Website is down below. It's autism society.org slash contact dash us. Or call 800-3-AUTISM, that's 800-328-8476, or email at development at autism-society.org. Um, I wanted to get that out of the way before we get to the meat of it. And also, we want to spend send a special shout out to our good friend, Miss Caveman, who is in recovery from surgery. Miss Caveman, we wish you all the best, all the love from the Faces for Radio. Uh, we hope yeah. you get well soon. Thoughts of and, prayer, um, and I hope Mr. Caveman is Mr. Caveman good. waiting on you hand and foot. That's yeah, what I mean. make um, sure he, he's feeding you. Just exactly make him wait take, on you. Exactly, like taking care of you. I know, I know, Mr. Caveman's got some issues too. So we do wish um, you both yeah. to be well. Um, I I hope to to see both of you to understand that both of you are back in your cave as soon yeah. as possible. Um, yeah. Let's go to the chat and say hey to everybody before we get going. Speaking of which, Caveman, hey. please hit the like button. Caveman, my brother, you get the cookie. Yeah. Congratulations. Cookies for you. Um, Grant, come in. Um, stream ended early. What's up? Hit the like yeah. button and prayers for Miss Caveman. Thanks, Grant. Um, yeah. Miss Caveman, it, hi, Grant. Oh, Thanks, hey. Grant. Guy gets I, I told you guy gets the cookie miss k man i'm glad um that you're i'm glad you're here i'm glad yeah. you're on the chat um hope you got some good pain medicine so yeah i hope you got the good painkillers um thank you surgery room well i'm glad the pain block <laughs> hasn't worn off yet so i'm feeling pretty good that's right yeah all right miss k man feeling good and robert's you, in the guy. house what's up rob good to see you we got robert coming in next week um, Robert and Corey. Robert and Corey. We got a four um, way. Corey's got his own stream going on right yeah. now, so he's not going to join us till a little bit later. And um, thank you, Caveman, for keeping us in the loop. 
Um, we yeah. really appreciate you uh, because we want to know when our our family, our community is down and out, yeah. so we can get the positive thoughts going. Definitely. I hope we see it too this weekend, Robert. Rob's going to see. Yeah, I think I'm going to see it Saturday myself. I might uh, see a gentleman tomorrow. Yeah. I'm a little concerned. I may not be able to see Sasquatch Sunset. So I know it, it, it's they look like a very limited release. It's got a limited release. Yeah. Um, so we might have to take that off the schedule. We might take that off, or if you guys get a chance to see Ungentlemanly Warfare, we may do that instead. Well, since it's not on for next week. Sunset's on. No, it's on after. It's That's on right. The, yes, the week after. That's right. It's on the week after. So yeah, we might have to take that off and just wait for it to hit streaming. Um, so, but yeah. So just, you know, keep, keep that under your hats for right now. If we get a chance to see it, we will, but it is premiering with Abigail and the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare. And there's a few others going with it. Yeah. Um, there's Glad one that I'm really interested. We're going to talk about it on movie news at five, which you guys is on every Friday night at 5 PM Pacific. Um, where we talk about new releases coming out, things like that. I didn't know anything about this Villains Inc. that's supposed to be premiering on Friday. I don't know what that is either. It's it's a superhero movie, only it's from the villain's point of view. And it looks like it looks like a comedy, and it's got Colin Mockery and a few other people, and then they're just it, it's the villain version of Mystery Men, is what it looks like. Oh, then see, I just checked out. He just checked out. You're out. I do check out. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> but I'm interested. If we put uh, on, a, you want to put on a schedule? We will. What's up, Cal? Uh, what's up, Cal? I don't think I'll be able to see that in the theater either. That looks oh, like it's a, a theater release. Oh, it sounds like a streaming movie. I ain't gonna lie. Lee Richards. That's right. <laughs> hey, Richard, I wish you a speedy recovery, Miss K. Man. Love it. Love it. And love it. Everybody's saying, "Hey, big ass cookie." That's right. <laughs> love cookies. <clears throat> put the down. Um, hey Rob, cue up the Tony Tony. It feels good. Oh, I should. A four way. That's right. <laughs> it's gonna be a four way sausage fest next Wednesday. Yeah. Stay strong, Miss Caveman. Yep. He, she's had to deal with Mister Caveman for a while, so she's strong. I, yeah. I already know that. <laughs> want to see Ungentlemanly Warfare? Take care. Oh, yeah, nice. I'm gonna see Ungentlemanly Warfare probably Tuesday. Tomorrow for me. Um. And what's up, Dell? What's up, Dell? Dell, hey, man, good to see you, man. I hope you're doing good. Yeah. All right. So I think <laughs> four way sausage fest. What the hell did I just come in? A well, Huck, <laughs> you I'll tell you, at the right time, Huck. You always come in at just the perfect time <laughs> to get the worst thing. <laughs> and and all all I have to say to that is, wow. That's right. <laughs> Um, but everybody's saying hi to Huck. Huck, it's good to see you, brother. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, we appreciate everybody. Sausage, what? <laughs> there's no. If there's no pie, I'm canceling my reservation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I would too, bro. <laughs> Love it. Um, speaking of Huck, it looks like I am gonna be on. Well, in the near future, I might be showing up on on Huck's channel, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. I, I look. I always look forward to talking with Huck. I can't wait. Huck's fucking awesome. Huck's Huck's a badass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you and Ben Muster made me look up Maitland Ward. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we got five movies. We watched them. Review them. Yes. To co-host on Tuesday. Tell the world. That's right. Um, I thought you were gonna make it a surprise, but. We'll let the cat out of the bag. I am going to co-host the morning mug on Tuesday morning with the Huckster. That's at 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time or 10 a.m. for your time, Rich. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be joining them on the morning mug with topics and and box office numbers and basically kind of what we do for movie news at five. Oh, awesome. Um, and then some other stuff. We're going to have some other topics to talk about. And so, yeah, we'll we'll talk about collecting and answer questions from the chat and all kinds of stuff. I, I look forward to it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, love it. Tell that's all. Man, I cut that out the, out the review. Um, so 
All right, so we got five movies. Mm-hmm. We, we took a look at these. Um, which do you think came in at our lowest score this week? Um, let me look at my numbers so I can take a quick glance. I, oof. The one I didn't like, the, I want to say The Haunting of the Shaman. That's interesting. I was going to hope I you're well. Know. Um, I'm sure she was entertaining for you. Uh, Miss Kate Man, Miss Kate Man, happy you're both hanging out. Yeah, love it. Um, no, actually, <laughs> um, our although I was I was kind of disappointed in the in the Shanley too. I yeah, we're, that we're dude gonna, just takes me out of it. Every I know that time. I know you don't like I, that one guy, and um, I and I agree. Like I, I I agree. There's uh, there's definite. He just he goes too. He goes too over yeah. the top with with the stuff. Just let the evidence speak for itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, no, our lowest scored movie is in theaters right now, and that is the first Omen. Yeah, I just really like this. I I, I did. I enjoyed it. Um, and I liked it a little bit better than Immaculate, but I thought Immaculate had a bigger surprise to it. Was more I thought Immaculate was better than this. This I thought this was predictable. This went exactly how I thought it would. I did like the Easter eggs compared to the original movie, how they how they how they brought up the original movie and things like that. I I did enjoy that. I enjoyed some of the effects. The fire effects were really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked I liked the stuff that kind of came with it, but I thought the story was kind of basic and the same as immaculate as the same as immaculate. I mean, basically, yeah, these we were talking about these two being kind of parallels only with a different. I don't want to say antagonist, but that's the only thing I can come up yeah. with. Like a different answer um, to, oh, yeah. to what's going to on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. a different thing at the end of the equal sign. Um, only the same basic plot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the first omen is in theaters right now, you guys. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Let us know your thoughts on it if you have seen it. I um, think the, the girl in here. Have you? Did you ever watch The Servant on Apple TV Plus? I highly yeah. recommend that series. It's like it's like three or four seasons long. Um, the nun and the main character in this is in The Servant too. Uh, well, that's cool. Yeah, Grant, you're going to be on Corey's channel on Wilkie's Movies and Music. That's awesome. Um, tomorrow night. That's awesome. Uh, she would, 7 she p.m. And I think that. your Colorado time, so that would be 6 p.m. my time or 8 p.m. Rich's time. Yeah. Um, but she's great. Lock, good meds, feeling no pain right now. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's that's awesome. Um, Cal, her current roles are slightly different from Boy Meets World. Um, yeah. So yeah, where were you going with that? Oh, just the lead, I like the lead actress in this because she's a great actress. She was yeah. good in the servant, and to me, that's the highlight of the movie. Okay, I, I do I like her. her. I thought she did a really good job. You should check uh, out the servant. Oh, I yeah, I'm, I've never seen the servant, but that's it's right up your alley. Okay. Oh, 7 p.m. Rich's time, so 7 p.m. Central time. He's he, uh, Corey's in my time. Corey's in Iowa, right? But Grant's in Mountain Time. Oh yeah, that's that doesn't count. Like, what does Colorado get their own time? <laughs> oh, heaven, <laughs> Colorado should get their own. Time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this this movie was. Hey, Cody, I'm, is Cody on? The the way it was shot, I love the visuals of it. It looked it was, oh, there he is, um, Cody. What's up, brother? Good to see you. What's up, Cody? Am I missing? Oh, I missed some stuff. Uh oh. What Temple? What Temple Granlin on Max? Caveman mentions. Has that got that person in it too? She's she's a good little actress. I, I'm telling you, man. I think you would like the servant. It's M Night Shyamalan, Ding Dong. Um. Yeah, I'm a ding dong. I love it. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I've looked at it. I've been interested in checking it out. Check it out, man. It's, it's I, pretty good. Yeah, I did binge Fallout. I haven't watched it yet. I liked it. I, I, I liked it. it. I, I think you have to be more, um, more apt to the game. Like you have to be really a big fan of the game to understand the Easter eggs and the stuff that's going on. Oh, I've never played it. Um, I played it a few times and I basically there, there's this thing that they do. And this is the thing that I always help my sons at. And that's a code breaking thing where you do it on the computer and you kind of break this code and I could just walk up and break the code. 
<clears throat> so, uh-huh. so my sons, when they were like, Oh, I've only got one more chance for this code. They'll call me over to come and tell them what the code is. <laughs> and, and I just kind of, it was just kind of funny. I was like, well, that I'm good at, but everything else I'd just get killed. Um, but I did like it. I'd like the show. It was actually pretty good. I, I, I dug it. Start it tonight. Good, good special effects, good action to it. Uh, like I said, it's a little hard to understand if you don't know the underlying plot of the whole thing, but they give you a little bit of background okay. in the beginning. <clears throat> but anyway, back to first omen. Back to first omen. Yeah. <laughs> Robert's on Cali time. Um, <laughs> Cody liked Fallout. Good. Yeah, I did too. I'm on Rich's page, so I can be the first and maybe the only comment. Yeah, you, at least. Okay. Evan, I'll I give you a piece, brother. You, there you go. Cookie for you. We appreciate it. Dude, I we appreciate, appreciate you. you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. If you jump over to um, Turner's, Turner Fan 77's channel really quick, we're running live on there too. Throw a like yeah. there. Um, but then be wherever you want to be. Right now, we have three on Twitter watching us live. So I want That's to thank you guys good, for man. being on. Um, we have eight on my YouTube channel and one on yours, and that would be Evan. Awesome. So Temple Grandland is a movie about a real person who has autism. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. She has a doctorate in animal behaviorism and has written several books and does talks all over the country. I do remember that movie. I don't. Um, the movie I've does a great job of showing how people with ASD think. And it's a wonderful movie. She was a consultant on the film, so it's very accurate. I do remember that movie. And now I understand where, where Caveman was going with that. So thank you so much, Miss Caveman, yeah. for translating for your husband for me. I appreciate that. Um, all right, back to back to First Omen. Um, yeah, I like I said, I I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, it I would never watch this again. Yeah, I don't know. This would not be an opening buy for me. This would be I'd wait till it was really on sale, and I'd probably get it because I have the other Omen movies. I'd watch it on your video because I wouldn't pay for it. Yeah, I'd let you watch it on my video. <laughs> You're allowed to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what else to say boring. about it. I, I I walked out going okay, <laughs> yeah, and, and and that was it. Well, it was different. I mean, I thought it was I thought it was a better movie than Immaculate. Like I said, see, I, I but I, I came out of Immaculate talking about it mm-hmm. because it wasn't what I expected. This was exactly what I expected. Yeah, it's paint by numbers. It, yeah, it, really it did exactly what I thought it would. It ended exactly how I thought it would. Um, but I enjoyed it because of the references and the Easter eggs to to the See, original. I, movie. I haven't seen the first Omen probably in thirty or the Omen in thirty years. Yeah, I, I, I watched it last time I was a teenager. I heard good, um, great things about the first Omen. I guess we'll see it when it comes out on physical. I, yeah, that's when, up to you. I I do think it's worth seeing. I don't. I'm not in theaters. I, I don't. I don't, think it is. I don't know if it's. I'd run to the theater for it. I mean, because if it, you're watching your pennies, because it's expensive to go to the theater. It is. Um, I would wait. Yeah. See, I I did too, Rob. I like the connection to the original Omen, and that's the thing. If you don't know the original Omen, then the Easter eggs and stuff wouldn't make any sense to you. You'd be like, I didn't okay, notice any Easter whatever. eggs to be honest. Yeah. No, they, they hey, did the name, born. some of the lines from the original movie. They had a picture of Gregory Peck in there. Um, and he's the star of the, he was the dad oh, yeah. of I, I the did original that, Damien yeah. and things like that. Yeah. There was some stuff. Um, and I agree, Evan, there's nothing wrong with paint by numbers movies. Sometimes it's what the, I agree. the doctor ordered. Yeah. I sometimes agree. if you want to turn your brain off and just watch something, I, I, I think that's me, good. But yeah, I like I said, Immaculate surprised me. That would be something I would watch again yeah. now that I have the ending in my mind mm-hmm. to kind of go through it again. Yeah. To Evan's uh, paint by numbers thing. Um yeah. I, that works for me with romantic comedy. Rich, Rich is back with the earthlings, uh, <laughs> with how much it costs to go to the theater. Yeah, yeah, now that his daughter's <laughs> no longer running a running a theater. He's got a. He's got two more weeks of of love, and then and then he's gonna have to pay just like us. You know, I he's know. gonna son of a bitch. For lack of a better word, he's going caveman style like us, and he's paying yeah. for the movies. Um, it's all for you. Yep. What's up, Harrison? What's up, Harrison, good to see you, brother. Um, the the youngest person that likes the oldest movies mm-hmm. I've ever met in my life. Um, Harrison just got an awesome soul. He's got a he's got a great soul. It's about three thousand years old. Yeah. And it's it's like full of hair, like like gray hair all over it. But 
he's got this he's got this incredible old soul and um and i, I really like doing the show with him because i know you were on there as well no oh, dude that was he turned me on wait let me read oh. <laughs> whoa I, that came out i heard it I, 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 I said, he boy did it come out wrong 12 angry men and I dude fucking love that movie. hang on so harrison you turned rich on He's that's like, gonna make the highlight show i know damn it oh, yeah you turned me on <laughs> i stick my foot uh, in my mouth got a, a hairy soul yes an old hairy soul he's got that rip van winkle soul with the yeah. with the beard and all that um, i would love to get harrison and evan on at the same time yeah um so uh, everybody's saying well whoa rich turned on <laughs> it happens more than you think <laughs> it does <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> i just i just had like star trek like sulu in my mind yeah. the K oh, going, my. oh my <laughs> harrison turned rich to 12 angry men oh yeah <laughs> that's the only way he likes it is when they're angry oh, no. uh, <laughs> <Rich is a laughs> man. well i love you guys uh, oh that's great what do you want what does he what? have a cone on yeah he has a cone on okay so he's, he, he is he, um so my dog has transitioned to an it because i got his he's been fixed so he's got to wear the cone one. for another week or so Oof. yeah but i'm like i don't want i don't want to deal with any puppies so yeah i don't blame you uh just you know no way and you know and your is about to swing off will you stop stop Slowly down. <laughs> so, so my dog is like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> anyway, we're gonna be crazy on the twenty fourth. Oh yeah, yeah, you have no idea, brother. We're gonna we're gonna have yeah. a blast on the twenty fourth. I can't wait. Um, let's go to our highlights. Uh, and um, oh, but first, let's get Grant's review of First oh. Omen. And I'm telling you, this is the greatest thing I have ever received in an email. And I've gotten nudes before. And this is the greatest thing I've sorry, ever received. Sorry, you were supposed to tell people about that. Oh, sorry. Not, I mean, your nudes were awesome. I mean, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I don't know how you got that long lens, but it was, uh, it was great. <laughs> um, that's why my cock is on the show. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So let's, take, let's check out Grant's review. A little, little flair on my part, but let's check Grant's review of First Omen. The first mature movie that he's seen. Check this out. Hey guys, movie buff Grant over here. Anyway, uh, I just got done watching the first Omen, uh, which is my first ever mature movie that I'm reviewing for Dave and Rich. And I am just going to say this movie is way scary. It is true to the original. And I am just going to say that it is fucking incredible. Fucking incredible. <laughs> fucking incredible. Uh, to even the way mature audiences. Uh, and I am just going to give my score of a 9.5 uh, for me. So... I think that's all I'm going to say. And um, also, the cast was stellar. An absolute bang. Dave, Rich, hope you guys take care. And hopefully, have a good pleasant dreams. Dude, that was awesome. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> he, he goes, <laughs> fucking awesome. Incredible. And then I'm like, dude, I'm slowing that down. I'm amping it up. So I put it in there twice <laughs> more times. Well, thank you, Grant, for that review. So, so now I have it. this forever. Fucking incredible. Forever. That's staying in here forever, which is awesome. That is awesome. So, that was awesome. Grant, thank you for the sound bite. That is going to be on this channel for years to come. Yeah. That was um, Grant, thank you for sending the review in. We always appreciate it. And I hope you send in. Next week, we're doing Wish. I hope he sends in uh, a quick review for Wish next week. 
Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I no, I don't think I got one from him. But I know he was talking about Wish, so I know he's seen it. Yeah, I, I hope he There's gets he some, some sort of movie subscription pass. AMC and Regal both have one. I don't have either one of those around here. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> Careful, David. The dog might turn rich on too. Um, <laughs> I have I have the A list nudes. Yeah, <laughs> you're what, <laughs> David? <laughs> I love this puppy wants some attention. He just got his <laughs> pelotas cut off. He got yes. No more no more huevos. No more huevos de perro. Um, love it. Cody's Cody's laughing. Whoa, Grant's getting saucy. I know, right? We corrupted him. <laughs> yep, we did. We told him. He was like, I want to keep it PG. Don't keep it PG for us. No, we don't keep so, PG. So he comes to me with fucking incredible. <laughs> that's gonna be there forever <laughs> grant i thank you brother <laughs> we appreciate you brother. i i heard that this morning and i'm like i am so putting it on the show right now <laughs> the, that is happening you're apparently uh, part of by the numbers grant uh, it's funny um david quote when seeing rich's nudes fucking incredible oh yeah <laughs> actually it's more like wow <laughs> oh shit no <clears throat> um, anyway anyway highlights for, let's for go to our highlights on uh, there's so many more texts but let's go to our highlights on first omen um which is basically so rich you have a 10 for visuals on this yeah i thought this was shot beautiful it, the, it the is way, i think it's beautifully the shot. of it yeah i totally agree you also you have sevens for acting direction and then you have a six for genre and then everything else is like fives and fours mm -hmm. um i have my highest is a nine i have a nine for subgenre. i think as paranormal goes i thought it did really well um i gave eights to trailer story and visual and sevens to acting direction and sound um but let's go to our final scores on it and then i'll try to clean up the rest of the chat um <clears throat> So IMDB, and hold on, I gotta get rid of this comment. Yeah, you liked that way more than I did. I did. Yeah. Um, but I generally like horror movies more than you do. But that is um, true. So I IMDB is giving this 6.9, Rotten Tomatoes critic score 81%, audience score 72%. Rich, you gave it a 61. I gave it a 72 for an average score of 66.5. Yeah. All um, right. So let's see. Uh, like Grant dropping f bombs, kind of like Mister Rogers cursing at me. It's both exciting and perplexing. I know I felt <laughs> right? I was a little uncomfortable, but then I couldn't stop laughing. So it, it just had to go on there. Do you have a guest yeah. for next week, Evan? We yeah. have two guests for next week. We've got Corey and Rob coming in for the twenty fourth. Um, right now it's six movies, but we might end up having to get rid of. No, I don't think we no. have to get one. No, we're, we're doing six one. movies. I keep thinking Sasquatch Sunset yeah. is next week because it's first. premiering this week. Yeah. And it, so that's where my brain's going. Um, because my brain is not working very well. Lately. Evan, so, you gotta come back on, man. We got yeah. all the way up to May 15th or May 24th takes, I think. Um, on our Faces for Radio Instagram page. Yeah. So get in there and pick a day. Yeah. The omen poster is moving mm -hmm. behind you, David. Yeah, that's he keeps moving. I don't know if the fan's doing it, or it could it be the dog. dog bumping it with his cone. It was the dog. Because you yeah. can see the little corner. You can see yeah. the, yeah, because he, he kind of catch that right there yeah. and make it move. Um, or it could be a ghost. Hey, who knows? Um, like when Arnold must corrupted in T3. Yep. When Arnold got corrupted in T3. Yep. Yeah. Shit, I can't type. You can't type. I can't talk. And, you know, Rich is turned on. So yeah. I think it's a good show Mike altogether. Harrison. Yeah, by Harrison. I think it's a good show together. Um, speaking of good, let's go to our number four movie. Which one do you think came in at number I'm four? I'm going to go with Bob Marley. You are correct, sir. Bob Marley, One Love. I really wanted to like this. I really did. I like those aspects of this movie I liked. I liked the music. The music was good. Um, Sasquatch on the brain. I'll take that. Um, okay, just loved wish and think people misunderstand. So no shit. An argument for it. Well, yeah, we're we're gonna talk about wish next week. 
um, on the show. So if you want to send in a review. Yeah, if you want to do a, a little a recording, you can send it to me. Uh, just hit me up on Instagram. I'll give you my email, and you can send it to me, and I'll put it on the show. Or you can just join in the chat and and speak your piece. But either way. But yes, Bob Marley, One Love, comes in at number four this week. And yeah, I I really thought this would be... I, th- I was expecting great. Mm-hmm. And it was it was good. It was okay. But yeah, it was it was fine. It just um I wanted more story. I didn't get I mean I, mm-hmm. I liked the story, but they really only covered like this. Yeah. And I and I wanted all the all the other stuff. I think the this is this is one time where I'm actually disappointed in the length of this movie. Yeah, I can see that. Um I there's things in here I didn't know. Um, I didn't know about yeah. the whole Jamaica thing, the political thing. I, I was I was ignorant when it comes to Bob Marley. I mean, well, I that I mean, when that all was happening, you weren't even born yet. Yeah, but yeah, but still, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know I mean, how I, he died. I knew about that. I I was it was weird. I don't know if it's a Mandela effect thing. I thought he was assassinated. I did too. I thought um, he was killed. I thought, and th- my wife said the same thing. She's like, "Didn't he get shot?" And I'm like, "He got shot." <laughs> but See, I thought he died. Turns out that's not how he died. Uh, but that was a uh... evening. Yeah. Yep. So one love didn't finish it. The actor was driving me crazy. A little bit, yeah. I, I could see that. Rich just turned on by Harrison. <laughs> yes, Rob. What's up, hey, what's up Jay? Jay over on, good? on Turner Fans channel. Um, that's awesome. Liked one love. It was good. I yeah, should have been R rated. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't um, see why though. Watched it with the CC on. It was cool because they that was the thing that I that it they printed out the I did the captions as well, thinking that I'd understand it better, but it was phonetically accurate to what they were saying. So I was reading it going, I still have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> um uh, but yeah, he was so young when he died. Yeah, he died at 36, and I was yeah. like, Wow. Um, I had no idea. I knew he was younger. Um yeah. but See the way people raved about this movie in theaters, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I thought, yeah, I thought the same thing. I was everybody was raving about it. I thought, "Oh man, this is uh-huh. going to be like right up there with Bohemian uh, Rhapsody." Bohemian Rhapsody, and um, I mean, way better than the um, the Whitney Houston one, yeah. which I thought the Whitney Houston one was better than this. Yeah, I agree. I one hundred percent agree with that. Um, what's up, Tiana? What's up, Tiana? Hope you're doing good. You. Um, I love Bob Marley's music. His best album is live Bob Marley. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I can't say I was a fan of his music, but I really loved the music in the movie. Me too. Uh, me I too. loved where they, I liked where they placed it. I loved how they did the music, whatever, whenever he was performing live or whenever they were playing the stuff in the background, it was all Bob Marley music. And at least as far as I know, yeah. And <laughs> no, he's turned on. He's not horny. He's just turned on. Um, only by Harrison. Only by Harrison. So, so I think Tiana's safe. Actually, <laughs> it was just Harrison that turns him on. I liked one love. Don't mind it. Focus on a short time period. I agree with that. I mean, yeah. I didn't mind it. I just I wanted more. Yeah. I wanted uh, to be educated more. I wanted it m- more, more of a biopic than it was. Yeah. Um, Cause what was that one? And I think, you know, the Whitney Houston one did the same thing. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, but um, there was one where we were like the, the Michael Jackson one, which was oh, the, great. Yeah, but that but was a documentary. Focused on thriller. Yeah. But that was a documentary. It was a documentary, but it just focused on thriller and the, um, I just I wanted I wanted more of his story, and yeah, I didn't really care for the main actor that played yeah. Bob Marley. Um, I didn't I didn't really care for him. Um, one thing I did learn in this movie is that dreadlocks repel bullets, apparently. Um, <laughs> because in in the you know his his wife gets shot in the head, and because of her dreadlocks, it didn't hit her brain. So I'm like, damn, I need to get me some dreadlocks. <laughs> 
Um, I don't, that'll never happen because, you know, I don't have enough hair to do any of that. And, you know, and the, the, there's a, there's a bald spot like right here. So I've got like a target. If I get dreadlocks, then there's still going to be this. I don't have a bald spot yet. No, I just, I just have a bald spot as my, um, as my mother said, may she rest. She says, if you're balding from the top, you're sexy. If you're balding from the front, you're a thinker. But when the two meet, you just think you're sexy. So, um, <laughs> glad I'm safe. Yeah, we, we are too. <laughs> yeah, you, you're safe. Um, speaking of um, biopics, you brought up the Michael Jackson thriller. Um, man, out of CinemaCon last week, some good um, word came out for that um, Michael Jackson biopic. So people oh, okay. were really excited. Yeah, I didn't like how they sugarcoated the marriage. But that's what happens when the family is heavily involved. Yeah, no, there was a. What I don't understand that. What does that mean, though? Well, um, well, from what I from what I understand, there was a lot of infidelity and oh. marital problems. But they they really, um, they really like canceled all that out, and it was like supposedly the perfect marriage, but it wasn't. There was there was all kinds of turmoil going on. Oh, see, I didn't know that. <clears throat> so. But yeah, we just have to, Jay. I'm we trying to picture that. I'm trying to picture that. We need we need pics. Um, I'm glad I'm all the way in California, far far away from Rich. <laughs> yes, you, I think you said that before, Rob. Yeah. Should have been rated R. I I agree with that to an extent, but um, and I I'm really kind of surprised. I mean, I'm it, for what they showed. It shouldn't be rated R. But if they're going to make yeah. it rated R, make it a little bit longer, I think it could have gone. It's only an hour forty seven minutes long. I think if it would, they would have put a half an hour more in it. They kind of, they could have given a whole bunch of stuff in the beginning, um, <clears throat> with how he changed because he was, he went from this, um, this political icon to this musical you know, icon, and then he put the two together, and they didn't even show yeah. half of that. Um, so I mean. Yeah. Bob Marley was uh, an amazing person. I, I, of course, I have problems with the drug use. Yeah. But um, aside from that, a brilliant musician and a great person. And it's so sad that he passed away when he did. Yeah. But I, I really, I, I, I liked this movie, but it didn't do the justice that I wanted. For me, the best part of the movie is when his shooter comes back in the house. Um, yeah, and he apologized. Yeah, yeah, I agree with I, that. I thought that was. I like. I like that too. And then, um, yes, lots of infidelity, including a number of kids with other women. Yeah, oh. you see all the kids at the end. <laughs> I was just like, I don't yeah. remember her having all those kids. I thought, I yeah, I see, did okay. I just, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Jay, if you send pics, <laughs> make sure you're fully clothed. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> Drug use was part of it. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I, I I get it. I'm not. You know, I, I am just, I'm not Rastafari. I'm not doing, I'm not like that. That's so. okay though, man. Yeah. Um, Dave has a problem with drug use. I don't, I, it doesn't bother me. It's yeah. So we, it kind of works out, you know, we're yeah. the yin and the yang. It, yeah. He has things that bother him that don't bother me. Yeah. And then I have things that bother me that don't bother him. So that's why we're a good contrast on the show. Um, but I, actually, me. I did not score this lower him. because of the drug use. They didn't really glorify the drug use. He was just there uh, smoking weed. And yeah. it wasn't like making it so he was better with the weed. Um, so yeah. I, I that thought that was weird. One Love was 10 times better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, I just. Whoa, um, Del. We're, we're going to say goodbye to Dell. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. All movies are subjective. I thought Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody, although historically inaccurate, yeah. was more entertaining and a better movie. Hey, but, Riley, man, whatever it is, he was a phenomenal in that. But yeah, Rami Malik, yeah, he yeah. was amazing. Mr. Robot. Uh, but but the Bob Marley movie, more historically accurate, but the actor, I didn't think the actor did as good of a job. Yeah. I so I mean, I you take the good with the bad, but I, I felt I loved Bohemian Rhapsody. I did too. Um and not so much with this one. But let's go to our highlights on it. But first we'll listen to Evan. Bohemian Rhapsody was terrible. Agree with Dell. Okay. He had 11 kids. I think he finally 
found his soulmate in Rita and became more of a family man. Ooh, man, 11 kids. 11 kids. Man, he needs to pull out. He, his pull out game times. is not strong. That is not, <laughs> that is, that is not strong. But it, in funny, in, in the movie, he only mentions Ziggy by name. Yeah, once. Once. It was outside of the park, wasn't it? Glad Bomb Marley One Love got a review. Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of which, I have a review from Grant. Ooh. Let's go to Grant's review of Bob Marley. Hey guys, movie buff Grant over here, and today I am gonna be doing by the numbers of Bob Marley's One Love. I saw this movie uh right before uh Madame Webb. And I will say that I really dug this movie. Like, I'm not going to lie. This film is mainly about family and, of course, love. And the movie came out on Valentine's Day, which kind of makes sense uh, for Valentine's uh, situations like this. If you are a fan of Bob Marley, I would highly recommend it and... I'm just going to say that the storyline was very good. The cast was amazing. The biopic was very fantastic. And the music was very catchy at times. I am going to be giving this movie a 10 out of 10. Uh, just in probably one of my favorite Paramount movies of the year. So that's it. And take care. So 97 Grant. from Grant. Good score. Um, <clears throat> notice that Bob Marley wasn't shown a single time in the movie, which helped keep it under an R rating. I don't understand. Well, he was he was shown at the no. end. I'm not, yeah, I'm that's not sure. my favorite parts when they're showing him the real. How about him. abstinence, right? I mean, well, he definitely didn't practice that with eleven yeah. kids. But no, I mean, shoot. No, if you guys if you guys don't like Bohemian Rhapsody, that's fine. Um, I I absolutely loved it. Um, but Bob Marley's music bring me bring me back to the days of partying in the Keys when I was a kid. Wasn't I have done a lot of research on their religion? I didn't know that worship worship our same God. Yeah, no, it worships. Yeah, it's all Jesus and stuff because they talk about the Bible. They use the Bible as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all it's all like a version of Christianity. Um, Rocket oh, Man was Rocket better. Man. Oh, I hated uh, Rocket Man, but Dell called that. David probably hate it because it's yeah, it was awful. <laughs> Not sure. Um, actually, no, he was showing smoke. He was smoking in the car in the, he, camera, the campfire. Yeah, the campfire. He was smoking with the pipe. Mm -hmm. Um, that a couple times where he was smoking. But like yeah. I said, they didn't, he didn't really, it wasn't like Puff Puff Pass and they it didn't focus on the joint. <laughs> That's all I know about marijuana, <laughs> except for the fact that it puts me in the hospital if I'm not careful. Um, That's funny, Puff Puff Pass. I just watched Puff Friday Puff. last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Said that. Um, let's, let's go to our highlights on Bob Marley, One Love. Um, coming to fourth place, you guys. Rich, you have a couple of 10s here. You have a 10 for the story and a 10 for sound. An eight for the ending, sevens for acting, visual, direction, genre, and subgenre. I have two tens as well. I gave a 10 to the ending and a 10 to the sound, a nine to the genre, an eight to the story and to the subgenre, and then sevens to the acting, visuals, and direction. Well, let's go to our final scores. On Bob Marley, One Love, you guys, coming in fourth place. Still pretty good. Yeah. Um, IMDb we'll is giving us 6.3. Rotten Tomatoes critic score 43%. Audience score 92%. Oh, damn. That's Rich, high. you gave it a 70. I gave it a 73 for an average score of 71.5. Yeah. Like I said, this would this would be like higher up. I mean, all of our movies were kind of are actually pretty good this week. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, There's one in here difficult to follow really sometimes. Loved. I was a little bored in the middle. Yeah, I was. Too. I'll admit, I was bored in the middle. I loved I loved the beginning and I loved the end, but I was kind of bored in the middle. I, I will add this to my collection. Awesome. 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 I'm glad. 
Yeah. All right. Number three. I am going to go with the Shanley movie. Yep, you are correct. The Haunted Shanley comes in third place, you guys. This is exclusively on Scare Network TV. If you guys have not already um, joined us, where is it? Yeah. Um, you can go to scarenetwork.tv um, to watch exclusive Spirits of Spirits content, which is my podcast with John, or you can check out all their paranormal documentaries, horror, true crime, and monster movies. They've got all kinds of good stuff there. Subscriptions are free with ads, but there hasn't there's not very many ads because they're just getting started and only a couple of years old. Um, but uh, you can pay for the subscription. It's four ninety nine a month, and then you can get full access without ads and all that good stuff. Um, so this one, I didn't yeah. like it. Awesome. Heard heard they're making Bruce Springsteen biopic. Yep. Yes, they are. With the guy from the bear. On it, Shanley. Never heard of this one. Yeah. So this is, a, like I said, this is exclusive for the Scare Network TV network. It's a documentary. It's a documentary about a hotel in New York. Um, and it's interesting because this actually is, yeah, this actually turned out to be connected to the, the Demon, Demon Castle, Castle which documentary. Which was fantastic. Which was amazing. Yeah. Um, but it seemed that the, the spirit, the negative spirit that was at the Demon Castle followed Sean Austin and Sean Aston and the guys that were there followed them here. Yeah. Um, and we're still messing with them. So um, I, I liked that part about it. It was interesting, but this was not as good of a documentary. Yeah. It as, felt too long. Like, like I said, it was, it, was two, it was over two hours long. Yeah. And it I think like an hour and a half. Cut that down. Yeah. Um, it's a documentary, but also a musical. <laughs> Huh. Springsteen, but Bi- yeah, the Springsteen biopic looks interesting. I'm, I, I'm interested in it. I'm not um, a Springsteen guy. I don't like it. I, I like Springsteen, but they're basing it on one of the albums, like yeah. they did. Yeah. Uh, um, it's not, not born in the USA. No, it's the one before that. I think it's the one before it. Um, and I'm like, born in the USA. It was like his album. That's the one that everybody listened to. So I don't know. I'm a little disappointed in that. But. But yeah, so you, so you guys basically what what these are is like a, a giant episode of Ghost Adventures, right? Or or Ghost Hunters or something like that, where paranormal investigators go to a location. There's a lot of talk about the history. They interview people, and then they do these investigations. Now, in this one, this one felt more like a Ghost Adventures episode than than anything else because they had they had some great history footage in the beginning, and then after that, it was pretty much all investigation. An annoying investigation. And and yeah, the, the annoying yeah. person that you don't like. Oh, dude, I can't stand him. I mean, I'm not saying I can't stand him. I don't know him. I don't like the way he's betrayed. Or the way he acts on... They should um, make a biopic about Rich. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I just don't like... I wish they would leave him off and just let that other dude... Because there's two... What's this? Sean Astin? That's his name, right? Yeah. Sean, Sean Austin. Sean Austin. Yeah, I, I really like Jay, him. Good night, brother. Um, hey, good night, Jay. Thank you so much for being on. You guys corrupted me. Wait till next week, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, uh, and then that other dude that, that followed him to his house, or they said his cabinets were opening up. And yeah. Focus more on those. Let those two guys do it. Yeah. Um, get I think that was off. Chris. Was that was that guy? Chris I yeah. yeah. I I'm liking him. Um, me too. And but yeah. I don't know. We're still we're still gonna see Eric for a little while, but I think I think he's off the network now. I think he's he stepped off to do something else. Oh thank gosh. But I think there's still a couple there's still a couple of documentaries coming that have him in it. But um and also I wanted to talk to you about um uh, uh actual original a uh, scare network original movie Ooh. that they that they released um that maybe we can check out and see if we wanna talk about on the show. If it's new, then let's just throw it in there because I need one more for the twenty fourth. Yeah, so, what was it just... called? Something about April or. Uh, let's just throw it in there. <laughs> yeah, I'll find it and we'll yeah. just we'll... send me a message. I just I don't know if it's a 
if it's a short movie or whatever. Yeah. When I do, the thing I liked about these documentaries is the audio that they capture. Like when that yeah. girl's talking, you hear that, no. Yeah. And that's that, that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand out. Like, yeah. Oh. Now there's some good, there's some good audio uh, mm-hmm. on, on all of these documentaries. I mean, yeah. Billy does a great job with the sound here. And then, you know, they had some visuals with, um, with some spiritual energy that was moving around. And then of course the SLS stuff, which yeah. had some really good stuff. <laughs> okay, Rob. Michael Pena should play Rich. <laughs> Paul Giamatti would play David. That would be good. I'd watch that movie. I'd, I'd buy that movie. <laughs> um, the Bear Actor, right. I feel love with a shameless uh, SHO series and most, oh, the Showtime series, most recently in the Iron Claw, not to be confused with the Claw from Liar Liar. Right. <laughs> Nothing can stop the Claw. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, like I said, this was this was good. But it was a miss compared to the other stuff that we've seen. Demon recently. Castle was fantastic. Demon Castle was amazing, and yeah. um, another one that I watched recently, which was Malefice, that was that was his home run. I gave that one a ninety-one. Oh, wow. um, for the documentary, but that's an older one, so we don't review them here. Yeah, I reviewed that on Spirits with Spirits. Um, yeah, <laughs> Pena and Giamatti sounds like a damn good movie, right, <laughs> dude? Yeah. And and it needs to be called the faces for radio. Yeah. I think that I think that'd be awesome. I we should write a script, send it into them, see if they like it. There you go. We'll do that. We'll do the show. <laughs> do the biopic movie about our measly yeah, <laughs> podcast. Boring. Um all right, but let's go to our highlights on it. If you guys get scared network TV, I, I would recommend other I, ones above this, but this was okay. But for five bucks though, man. But f- yeah, for five bucks yeah. a month and no ads, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Classic horror, like you can watch like classic movies. Um, they got the Taking Endeavor Logan. They got like, just all sorts of horror documentaries and series. Not to mention our podcast, Spirits with Spirits, with myself and John, where we yeah. review haunted locations and alien events, cryptids, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. um. Uh, uh, it's it's awesome. I love it, and I hope you guys get a chance to do that. Um, both y'all have badass shirts on tonight, though. Thanks, brother. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, well, you are too short and too loud to be played by Penn and Teller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Teller's pretty short. Yeah. I mean, compared to compared to Penn Gillette, who's like I don't know, he's is like an angry building or something. He's like caveman size. Um, I don't know how tall he is, but um. Uh, but yeah, tell her um seems a little quiet for for us. But no, I like Penny and Giamatti. I think that works. That was a good that's a good that's a good pick. I'm down yeah. for that combo, man. I'd watch that yeah. movie. Yeah. Speaking of which, going back to our highlights, um, Rich, you did give a 10 to sound, so did I. Because I, I think the sound is the best part about this documentary. You gave an eight to the cast and an eight to the subgenre, which is paranormal. And then sevens to ending, story, visuals, direction, and genre. I gave my tens to cast because I know all the guys and sound. And then I gave an eight to the subgenre. And then sevens to trailer, ending, visuals, direction, and genre. So all in all, we're pretty close here. We'll go to our final score. Um, Now, no reviews on on Rotten Tomatoes usually doesn't don't they don't touch this mm-hmm. network at all. They didn't even so have it on Letterbox. Yeah. Well, yeah, the one when I put on Letterbox, I have to I have to put it on. Oh, okay. So I I submit the request to the movie database or whatever it is um that's connected to Letterbox and then they put the the documentary on there. So I I did that with the the last two with Demon Castle and with um yeah. What was the first one that we watched? The Bel Air, yeah. Bel Air House. Pen is ginormous. Yep, I just volunteered to my local comic book store for a five fourth <laughs> free comic book day. <laughs> because that's free. Yeah, it's free comic book days coming up. That's awesome, Rob. Hopefully, you pick up something good. I know um, they have an X Men event. I think it's X Men free comic book in the Marvel. 
And I think Transformers is going to have on free comic book day too. There's some good stuff coming out, man. Yep. All right, let's go to our final scores on the Haunted Shanley. This is coming in third place, you guys. Like I said, um, IMDb has it as a, at a 7.0, but there's only one review, and it's mine. So <laughs> um, so I'm not going to really count that, but that goes on there. Nothing on Rotten Tomatoes. Rich, you gave it a 71. I gave it a 74 for an average score of 72.5. Yeah, I would never watch this again. Yeah, me neither. I think I'm. I think I'm. This is one that I'm like a one and done, maybe. Yeah, Demon Castle, I'd watch again. Um, I'm oh, getting a free cool, T-shirt as well. That's cool, bro. Pen is six six. See, I told you he was a tall. Anything over over five ten is gigantic to me. So, <laughs> rich again for the lowest. <laughs> yep. All right, let's go to the next one. I'm going to go Ricky Stanicki. You are this correct. Sir. Ricky Stanicki comes in second place. I like this, bro. I did too. I, I did really, I, I like really comedy. enjoyed this. This was, this was hilarious. It's raunchy. Mm -hmm. um, it's in my five-year-old brain and my adult brain. Both really liked it. Yeah. Um, all it's missing is a really good poo scene, but I'm okay with what they got. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of dick and ball jokes. Really? There's a lot. John Cena. A, a lot of dick and ball jokes. Yeah. Um <laughs> That's what she said. Uh I'm short at 62. No, you're not short at 62. Yeah. Shut up. Rich knows. Yeah, Rich knows. Um But guys, this is on uh This is on Prime right now. This made me laugh. At this this was funny. This was not. Yeah, uh, this was way good. better than I expected. Yeah. Um. So the synopsis on this reads: When three childhood best friends pull a prank that goes wrong, they invent the imaginary Ricky Stanicki to get them out of trouble. Twenty years later, they're still using the non-existent Ricky as a handy alibi for their immature behavior. Um. <laughs> dick and ball jokes. Yep. Yep. Um. <clears throat> there, this guy. John Cena plays hard rock rod. Um, and he basically changes. He does a weird Al Yankovic to songs and he changes them into masturbation songs. Yeah. Just, and it's just, funny watching them. Perform. Stick that in your head. But when he's singing the songs and he's dressing up, it's hilarious. When he does Devo. Oh. Yeah. That was funny. Uh, Billy Idol. Yeah. Billy Idol. Um, caveman is exactly a foot taller than me. <laughs> Cena looks hot. <laughs> Ricky Snicky was, was. I did funny. too. I I yeah. loved it. Rock Rock Hard Rod was was his stage mm. name at the um, the swampy the swampy chicken or whatever the heck yeah. that that casino was. Doesn't have a bad. No, he's not bad. I mean, he's he's still one of the one of the best one of the most underrated freestyle rappers that I've ever heard, but. Uh, aside from that, he was he was singing pretty good, yeah. and I and I liked his I liked the songs that he was doing, and then the stuff that he was saying was hilarious, because even even when he was in a regular conversation, his jokes his his mm -hmm. his humor was, you know, everything was about was about dicks, <laughs> you know, kind of like Rich. He had, had plenty of dick for Rich. He was plenty of dick. Plenty of dick. It was it was like. <laughs> I think maybe Peacemaker has got me all left. <laughs> uh, Peacemaker may have helped him with this role. Yeah, I mean, but no, he was. I thought John Cena was good in this. It was, uh -huh. you know, that that actually the one that kind of disappointed me was Zac Efron. I thought he was just kind of, yeah, he was just kind of there. I mean, he's not he's not a great actor, but yeah. he just he just he seemed really subdued. And I guess they're supposed to have him that way. Um. As opposed to like when he was in Neighbors with with Seth Rogen, yeah. he was the crazy one. You should reach out to Rock Hard Rod for your news at five. <laughs> we, we should. Um, but, but yeah, this, dude, I like this. And I did too. This had no business being as funny as it was. This had this had no business being this good. Mm -hmm. I, I, I liked it a lot. 
And wow. but yeah, it's it's rated R, and it even says uh, R-rated comedy because <laughs> that's what it is. It really, I mean, it was. So we don't get those very good ones very often. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Joyride and No Hard Feelings were kind of the last yeah. ones. Other than that, there hasn't been very good, any really good R-rated comedies. <clears throat> like we like. Yeah. How hard? Rock hard. Um, Efren and Cena did not sound like a damn good movie, but I guess I'll give it a shot. It doesn't, right? You're thinking like, eh. I mean, when I saw yeah. the trailer for it, I'm like, I don't know if I want to watch this. <laughs> right. I want to check this one out. Is it is it coming to physical? I don't know. I don't Good know. question. With dick jokes, I'm in. I bet you are, Rob. In your mouth. In. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> you totally beat man. me to it. I don't know if it's coming. Prime, sometimes the movies don't come to. Yeah, sometimes uh, they don't, or they don't release them, like, for a while. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't have a... I don't show a physical release. Yeah. So, I I hope to see it. This is... I'd buy this. I, I think I would, too, but maybe at $10 on Blu-ray. Yeah. I would pay more than 15 Cena is in you, Rich. That's really great, Dell. I've seen it twice. Uh, yeah, I just I enjoyed this way more than I thought I would. Yeah. Um, oh, I want to point out that we got likes on Facebooks from my son Eric and my sister Luan. Thank you so much. Thank I love you. you guys. We are now sitting with eight live on Twitter. That's awesome. Uh, that's amazing thank you guys yeah. for joining us it's too bad you guys can't comment on twitter but you can watch us live um yeah. but feel free to message me at uh the 4k lowdown um at the lowdown one on twitter or x if you want to if Kids. you have a movie that you want us to view or something like that that's new that's coming out we, we got something we were working on um that we will talk about at the end of the show i hope we still do yeah um, i almost forgot about it yeah. I was like, what else? We were doing another thing tonight, right? And then I had, and then I went over to you know on Instagram and, and I saw the the thumbnail that I already made for you for it. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh might get a UK or Australian release, maybe. Okay. Um, sounds like a classic with dick and ball jokes. Oh yeah, it's a classic. This is this is an instant classic with dick and ball jokes. <laughs> um but Even yeah w William H Macy with the uh, with, with the with the air with the air dick yeah air dick stuff and yeah. cupping the balls <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious yeah he was like oh my god I can't believe I'm doing that oh it's so funny I yeah. was I was laughing it was it was, was great sure. it was great let's go to our final scores on it did I do that? I didn't do the highlights yet, did I? No, you did do the highlights. Uh, nope, I didn't. Highlights on it. Let's do that first. Do, 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 do. Highlights. You gave it a 10 for cast and a 10 for sound. And then you have eights for story, genre, and subgenre. Seven for acting and ending. And then a three for the trailer. You watched the trailer and you were like, no, fuck that. Um, I did. It was like, nope. Yep. Now I see, actually I did I not like. give I did I'm not like give not any tens. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be a surprise. Yeah. I did I did not give any tens here. I gave nine to the cast, ending, and genre. Cause I was I thought it was really funny. I gave an eight to the story and an eight to the subgenre, and then sevens to acting, directing, and sound, which I, I never thought I never thought I would put a seven for acting for a John Cena movie. I never thought I would do it. But have you watched Peacemaker yet? I have not. I haven't seen an episode of Peacemaker. The only thing I've oh. seen is that Suicide Squad movie. Oh, 
watch Peacemaker. I didn't like that Suicide Suicide Squad <laughs> movie with him in it. Seedlings is all until I saw. All I'll say, Macy was iconic in the Shameless TV mm-hmm. series. I agree. Yeah, I I haven't seen that. I've seen episodes of that, but I haven't seen the whole series. I seen the first three seasons. That's it. But I I like William H Macy. I think he's amazing. Mm-hmm. Very underrated actor. Yeah. But yeah, no, I thought John Cena was hilarious in this. Mm-hmm. Kept cracking me up. And in in the midst of all this, like I said, my five year old brain loved it. All the dick jokes, all the crap, loved mm-hmm. it. And then there's a little there's a little bit of a good story going on. I agree. That really surprised me. And that's where yeah. my adult brain was like, oh hey, there's actually a point to this. And it actually made sense. I know, right? So so yeah, I think you know, you know, come for the stupid, stay for the for the intelligent stuff. Yeah, Peacemaker's good. I can't wait for season two. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I will definitely watch it at some point. I just haven't seen it. But now we can go to our final scores mm-hmm. on Ricky oh, Snicky. Yeah. You guys coming in second place. IMDb is giving this six point two. Rotten Tomatoes critic score forty eight percent. That seems logical for them. 73% for audience score. Rich, you gave it a 71. I gave it a 76 for a total average score of 73.5. Yep. Jennifer Holland is hot. I love the Suicide Squad and Sweet. Peacemaker. I didn't like the Suicide Squad. Well, I saw that first, of course. I didn't like it. But then I watched Peacemaker, and then I understood what James Gunn was doing. So I went back and revisited the Suicide Squad, and I liked it a lot more. It made more sense then, huh? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but our number Rich, one movie. Rich is low again. <laughs> it was recommended to us. Yep. From Caveman. And I'm so glad he recommended this. I'm glad he recommended this too, brother. Yeah, our so our number one brother. movie this week is The Lionheart. And it's on Max right now. <clears throat> this was touching. This was, um, this was just fucking good. Yeah, this was this was good. So I'm gonna read the synopsis. It says Dan Weldon, a two-time Indianapolis 500 champion, died on the track, shocking the world of motorsports to its very core. Ten years later, Sebastian and Oliver Weldon continue their father's practice. Um. I like how this documentary goes full circle mm-hmm. with the kids and, and then the, the mother dealing with it as first yeah. a wife. And then as the mother of the two boys dealing with us, basically going through the same emotions. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start this by saying, I don't know shit about racing. I don't, <laughs> Me neither. I don't know shit about <laughs> Indy 500. I don't know shit about the formula one racers, nothing like that. The but only you don't need to of. to grasp the story. Yeah, you don't. You don't need it to grasp the story. The I didn't know the history about upsetting. this. I didn't know what happened. Um, but this this is just a really good story about this family, and you know, you can you can plug this into just about any sport, mm-hmm. and and see a similar story, where the the father dies doing the sport that he loves and then the kids follow suit and they go into the same sport. Um, so to have this story was really good. So I want to, this would not have, this is not, would not have come across our nope. radar if it hadn't been not for caveman. All. So caveman, we love you, brother. Thank you so much for yeah. giving this to us goes for any guys. If it's a new movie, it has to be a new movie um, within a couple months. Um, recommend it to us. If you want us to review it. Yeah. Yeah. See, Lionheart was good, but not, f- but not for me. I've never been a Formula One fan, so I vaguely remember him dying. I was an NHRA fan growing up. Okay, so I don't know what any of that means. I I, I don't know what any of that NH. I don't know what that means. But um, F one is Formula One. Um, so I you were kind of bored. I understand sports. that. But like I said, I didn't know anything about this. I still thought it was a good story. Me too. Um, but I I would not revisit this. I would not watch this again. Me neither. I'm, you know, one and done. And I don't, I don't think I would have missed, you know, my life. Drag. Okay. That's drag racing. NHRA is drag racing. 
Thank you, Miss K, man. I appreciate the, I the education. I don't know anything about any of that. Um, if it's football, I know all of it. If it's baseball, that's rich. Um, other than that, or if it's wrestling, you we both can answer those questions. But um, yeah, I don't know. I've always been interested in Formula One racing. Sadly, wasn't ever adopted in the in the states like soccer. Um, yeah, this was. Uh, I mean, but like I said, it's good. It's a great story. I don't think my life is better for it because I watched it, but I'm really, I, I'm really glad it's our number one movie. Me too. Me too. I, I was touched. I, I felt more for the kids that, I mean, I'm not saying taking away the wife's pain, um, yeah. but seeing like, can you imagine what those kids was feeling? when they see the, the other kids dads well that that know. was the thing they oh, were like man. the other kids when you know when they come into michael andretti's thing and and they're they're racing and all these other kids their dads are like helping them yeah. but they don't have their dad their mom is helping them yeah and not that she doesn't know her stuff but yeah no i totally felt that oh, that's um, heartbreaking with, with the boys and they they touch on it in the documentary mm -hmm. it's like maybe you know you know this is this is what's going on because they couldn't figure out why the boys weren't doing well and i think so. and another thing i loved was dan's friends the other racers you know his surrounding friends yeah the supporting yeah the, the support core people system. that were on his yeah. team back in the day and how oh, they kind of stepped up yeah. and and helped the family i i did like that see and, and this is the thing miss k man i want to come to you again on this i think because I think either you got to be a Formula One fan or not be a fan of any of it. Because, you know, if you're a fan of drag racing or if you're a fan of NASCAR, then maybe this won't appeal to you because you're not a Formula One fan. But because I didn't know any of this, I'm not a fan of any of it. I just went in for the story. And I like the story. Yeah. So... Uh, so they live their lives one quarter mile. <laughs> well, the Indy 500, I think it's 500 miles, but, but yeah, you know, I, love, what, I, love I didn't know there was a go-kart league. I had no fucking clue. Yeah. No, I, I knew something about that. <laughs> they have, that. they have like all different like levels of leagues, like from go-karts to like these the little buggies. Um, I had no idea. Stuff like that. They yeah, have all check it out, of, Robert. Yeah. I, it's, it's worth seeing good. Very tragic what Vegas promoters were yeah. encouraging for. Yeah. No, that was the whole thing about, you know, how he, how Dan Walden died. Yeah. Um, and that's Thank the thing. Man, Robert. Thank Thank man, because we wouldn't have known about this documentary yeah. either. This would, like I said, this would not have yeah. been on our radar at all. If Caveman hadn't said, hey, Lionheart, check this out. And I'm like, Lionheart, what's that? Um, and, then, and the thing I didn't like either was, was that fucking idiot. The way he said he Dan Weldon died, he just nonchalantly just announced it in the press conference. You, you, did yeah. you catch that the way he just delivered it? Yeah. I didn't like that. Uh, just something that really bothered me. But again, this is a great documentary. Yeah. I, I might be putting this in my maybe in my top ten so far. I've only got four movies in my top ten so far. Well, at least you don't call it a top five anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I only have I, right now. I only have two movies in my top ten. Um, and one of them is next week for me. One of them is next week. Yeah, that's the one. One of them. Is, oh my god, it was so good. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, and we're not talking about Wish. We're not talking about Wish, but fuck, I was. Yeah, dude, I was so impressed with that movie. Me it was too. really, really good. I think that movie makes up for what he did with men. Yeah. The Grand Prix is going to be at Long Beach, California. See, I don't know anything about that, bro. I don't, yeah, me neither. But it sounds like you're, you know, you're a Formula One fan. And if you are, this, oh, you'd love this movie. Yeah, this, I, I think, you, I think you'd take this documentary. Um, But I liked it. I got That's, choked up. I choked up. Dude, I ain't going to lie. I'm a crier anyway. I'll admit that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a big baby. Yeah. yeah I'm a crier. Um, All right, let's go to our highlights on it. 
So, Rich, you gave tens to the ending, story, and sound. And then eights to the acting, visuals, direction, genre, and subgenre. I gave a 10 to the story. And then I gave eights to acting, direction, sound, and genre. And then sevens to visuals and subgenre. Um, yep. Thanks, Caveman. Um, Civil War and Dune Tune so far for me. Joke what? <laughs> um, very, very welcome. <laughs> Come here for the dick jokes and leave for the record. Hey, no problem. That's that's hey. a great tagline. That is a yeah. great tagline. Come, come for the dick, leave, leave for the doc. Um, <laughs> um, but dude, I, this was good. I, I will, I will admit this was good and nothing like kicking it in the driveway. What's up, Holland? What's good up, to see you, brother. You're doing good. <coughs> we are just talking about our, our number one movie this week, which is the lion hearts documentary on max. You guys, if you get a chance to see it, um <laughs> Rob is all messed up. Dude, you're you're gonna be so yeah. turned around next week, bro. And turned on, baby. Yeah, and turned on. Yeah. Thank you, Cave Man. We will get to Spotify here in a second. Um, let's go to our final scores on the Lionheart. Let you guys this is coming in first place. IMDB is giving this a 7.2, no rotten tomatoes critic score. And with less than 50 reviews, a 95 for the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Rich, you gave it an 82. I gave it a 75 for an average score of 78.5. Yeah. This is a fantastic documentary. Uh, Or turned out. No, turned on. I mean, (laughs) turned around. I don't know. <laughs> Some something will be in a knot by the time you by the time you get done. But you guys, this has been an amazing show. Yeah. Um and get the fine tuning out of the way. This has been an amazing show that is sponsored by Spotify for podcasting. They take the audio portion of our live stream, sponsor us, and get us on other podcast sites like Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, Castbox, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. They do it all for free. And once we get more followers, they give us more sponsors and we can start monetizing and making money at this. Uh, but for right now, we're doing it for the fun. Um, we're still sitting at 25 followers on Spotify. So if you guys get a chance, give us a follow on Spotify and then you can listen to us on any podcast network. Awesome. Please do. Yep. Rich has the high score. I think this is the only one yeah. that Rich score is higher than mine. Otherwise, I, I think really that like was higher it. than Rich on every other movie. Another thing I wanted to point out, and by complete accident, all of my movies are a point apart for my scores. Oh, really? I had 72, 73, 74, 75, and 76. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, so, again, honoring Aut- Autism Awareness Month, <laughs> my OCD actually did that. So, Autism Awareness Month is for April, you guys. And I'm going to put the um, the banner, the ticker to call in and also go to the autismsociety.org yeah. slash contact us. Um, if you suspect your child has autism to get them tested, um, cause if they're on the spectrum, it's easier for them to be diagnosed and move forward with their lives. So you guys, um, if you're finding that, you know, like my granddaughter, uh, we felt that she was about two years behind at least with her development and, and nonverbal. And now she's talking and having a great time. So she's still, she's still a little bit behind. We might have to, can't start her in kindergarten yet, but she's going to turn five next month. And um, we're looking forward to maybe next year, probably getting her in kindergarten, which would be a lot sooner than we could have. So you love, I love it. And I love my granddaughter. And I know if my granddaughter were here, she would say. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I love her so much. Why Rich has the high ground. <laughs> um also kind of piggybacking on TikToks. this. <laughs> We're gonna hashtag I, that. I, that's a pretty good one. I want to talk about mental health. Um if you guys are struggling, I mean I struggle with mental health. 
oh, almost everybody struggles with mental health, mental health at one point. Man, if you ever down and out, reach out to someone. Don't try to keep it in. Um, I know David. I can speak for you. Um, we're here if you ever need to talk. We're not yep. professionals by any means, but I got big ears. I'm a good listener. Um, Dave's a good listener. Um, yep. Just reach out to somebody. Um, just don't keep it in because it's not good. Yeah, no, don't bottle that in, you guys. If you're yeah. if you're ha- if you're struggling, hit somebody up. And if yeah. you don't have anybody, you have us. Yeah. So don't think that you're ever don't think that you're ever alone. Because you're you're never alone in this. There's always someone there to support you. And if you don't think you have someone to support you, you do because yeah. that's yeah. us. So that's no judgment. That's all. You guys, yeah. if something's no, going on, whatever. no judgment. We we are here to help you. Yep. I love that, Miss K Man. Yes. Beautiful. I mean, well thoughts, well wishes, prayers yeah. to you um in a speedy recovery. K Man, you're welcome, brother. Yeah. Temple Grandin. I've seen it. I have never heard of it. Um well, next week. Adults can be tested for ASD too. Yes. I Sometimes the diagnosis gets overlooked and people are kids. Um yeah, I mean I I recently not related nine eight eight. Oh yeah, that's the um that's the mental health hotline. Yeah, thank you, number, you guys. Thank you, K man. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just recently found out before it was called ADHD, it was called hyperkineticism, and I was actually diagnosed with that when I was a child. So, um. I I now understand why I am the way I am, but uh, it's there, there's no shame in getting no, help. That is absolutely not. right. There is no shame. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's, dude, Dell, we love you, man. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're always here for you. If you don't, like I said, I'm just I'm trying to re- reiterate on my soapbox here that if you need help. Yeah, we're here for you. If you know, if you don't think anyone's here for you, we're here for you. So you know our Instagram pages. You know, uh, some of you have my our phone numbers. Um, yeah, yeah, phone numbers. You're some of you have our you. email addresses. Mm-hmm. Whatever, however you want to reach out to us, um, we're here. We're on Facebook. We're all over the place. Yeah, um, but yeah, remember, we're not alone. Yeah, thank you for making us aware of autism and bringing up mental health, brother. No problem. Um, we're going to, we're going to affect your mental health next week, <laughs> but in a good way, I hope. <laughs> so, um, so next week's as, movie, as, as Grant says, it's going to be fucking incredible. That's right. It's going to be fucking it. incredible. Um, it. so <laughs> we appreciate you guys and everyone. Yes. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Then I also want to acknowledge the people that come and see us on the replay. Thank you for watching mm-hmm. our program. We really appreciate it. Um, again, if you do go on the Faces for Radio, also go on Turner Fan 77's channel and hit the like button there for us as well. Um, brother, what do we got going on for next week? We got, of course, we got Rob and Corey coming next Rob week. Rob and Corey. I said coming. <laughs> Rob and Corey are coming. We have Sausage Rebel, Fest. <laughs> we have Rebel Moon My ears. Part 2 on Netflix. We have Civil War on theater at the movie theater. We have Night Swim on Blu-ray and VOD. Yep. We have the Academy Award nominated film. I don't think it won anything. Oh, it won but sound, didn't it? Uh, Zone of Interest on Max. And then yeah. I think it won uh, for best foreign film, right? Oh, you know, maybe that's what it was. I knew it won yeah. something, maybe. It won for best and, international film because it beat Society of the Snow. Oh yeah, which and I'm gonna find out why because Society of the Snow was fantastic. Yeah, that movie. Yeah, that was. And then Wish on Blu-ray, BOD, and Disney+. Plus. Yep. Those are our five movies. And possibly have a sixth. With oh, Abigail. no, we've added Abigail. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's what it was. It's Abigail. Yeah. yeah, no, we've added Abigail. So we have six movies next week. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> coming all at once. <laughs> that's the way it's got to be, bro. Four guys in a cup. Four guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's what you should put on the thing, uh, on the um, thumbnail. Four on the thumbnail, it's gonna be four guys in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say sausage fest, but four guys in a cup. 
that's that's happening. I'm going to put that on the thumbnail. <laughs> it's going to be a huge show next week. Yeah, and we're talking about four guys in a cup. It's going to be huge. <laughs> we're going to have to get a big cup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch the night swim so I can join the hate fest. Okay. Yeah. I, we'll see. I have I no. Rich I've seen it. it. I have it. So did you I, buy I'm, it? I know. I did not buy it. <clears throat> okay. Because they only have the DVD. If I'm going to buy okay. it, I want the Blu-ray. Yeah. Oh, um, because I need to watch it again. So I'll probably rent it. Um, I'll probably rent it Sunday night. Would that be okay? Yeah. No, the Night Swim or yeah, Night Swim is available on something, isn't it? I don't think so. Let me look. I thought I had to. Rent it. I thought it was. I thought it was free somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, it's on. It's on Peacock. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Save me a rental. Oh. Yeah, save me. I save me a little money, bro. It is. See, it is I on see, Peacock. Yep. I see it at the theaters. I saw it on Peacock. Thanks, out. guys. Love it. Society of the Snow was amazing. Snow. Now I'm yeah, out. It was. All right, Dell, brother. Thank you so much. Well, thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> the cock. <laughs> yes, the peacock. Um. Uh, yeah, no, this has been this has been an absolute pleasure, you guys. Yeah. Again, April is Autism Awareness Month. Tell your friends. Also, mental health is no joke. Yeah. Tell your friends. Um, and you know, pay it forward. Let let your friends know, let the people around you know that you're there for them yeah. if they need help. Um and like my granddaughter always says, awesome. You guys are amazing. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, seen Night Swim already in the theater, and I think Rich did too. You mm -hmm. saw in the theater, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't into watching it in the theater because I heard bad things, so I was yeah not interested. But I am interested in checking out our movies next week with our special guests, Corey and Rob. I'm looking forward to having you guys there. But I think we're out of here, brother. We're out, man. You guys right. take care. God bless. God bless you guys. Take care. We'll see you next time on the Faces for Radio podcast.